It interests me that you just said mankind is selfish and greedy, and that has always been the battle cry of those who have said, therefore, we must impose controls upon them. Therefore, we have to put power in the hands of other selfish and greedy men. Now, I, I want to apologize for what I said. The great bulk of mankind. There are always conspicuous exceptions, not everybody. And also, for each person, there's an exception. People are selfish and greedy in one aspect of their activity. They are unselfish and uh, uh, generous in another. No, I, I understand so that. But I don't mean to be making a... I understand, but again, that is the philosophic basis of the argument that government must step in. But it's a, it's a false argument because it assumes somehow that government is a way in which you put unselfish and ungreedy men in charge of selfish and greedy men. But government is, a, is, an, is an institution whereby the people who have the greatest drive to get power over their fellow men get in a position of controlling them. Look at the record of government. Where are these philosopher kings that Plato supposedly was trying to uh, uh, develop? Limited to that uh, Athens you were talking right. about. Right. Well, they never got power there. Or they wouldn't have been philosopher kings either. Acton, Lord Acton, of course, made his famous comment, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So that I do not believe that that argument will, su that, that base will sustain the conclusion. Well, isn't, isn't there a major question, though, related to those who say that Lord Acton really was saying that power tends to corrupt, and I suppose that absolute power tends to corrupt absolutely, yes, and, that, that. and that it's too simple to say that power corrupts, and that there's a trade-off here and a balancing which leads me to, to, to ask you, literally, in these last few minutes, where are we going in your estimation? Uh, quite honestly, quite directly. Sure. There is a balance, you're quite right. I'm not in favor of eliminating government entirely. I think government is growing all out of proportion to its scope. Where are we going? I believe that that depends on us, that that's not in the cards. It's not, na uh, we are masters of our own destiny. But if you take the road we have been on, we are heading toward a destruction of our free society and toward a totalitarian society. We are unfortunately headed down the route which Chile has already taken essentially to its end, which Britain has taken much farther than we are. Now, I ho uh, we still have time to avoid it, but we will not avoid it unless the people of this country recognize the danger and take very difficult and important steps to set a limit on the extent to which they are going to permit government to interfere with their lives. If you thought that we were not going to avoid it, that we were going to continue down present paths, the path to surf them, perhaps, would you then try to develop some different kind of philosophy, some different kind of approach that might enable us to make the jump from the freedom that you embrace and the near serfdom that seems likely in the future? I don't believe so, because I think there, if you go down that road, I don't believe there is any philosophy which will enable you to avoid it. I believe, I would, my own reaction is very different. It is to say we don't have to go down that road. I may think the chance, I really do think, that the chance is a good deal less than 50% that we'll be able to avoid it. We may well be fighting a losing battle, but if it's the right battle, if it's the only alternative to serfdom, then we ought to fight it and try to convert that 15, 25, 30% chance, whatever it is, into a certainty. There are some sources of support on our side, fortunately. Tell me, give me the name of two, please. I will be glad to. Number one is the extraordinary ability and ingenuity of the American people in finding ways to get around laws. That's a major source of strength for freedom. And number two is the inefficiency of government. People go around complaining about waste in government. I am always reminded of a, say, of a wonderful saying of an old teacher of mine. He was a teacher of statistics, and he made this statement about statistics, in which he said, pedagogical ability is a vice rather than a virtue if it is devoted to teaching error. Well, I say thank God for government waste. If, if government is doing bad things, it's only the waste that prevents the harm from being greater. And the waste of government has two very important elements. Number one, if government were now spending the amount it spends, which is 40% of our income, governments, federal, state, and local in the United States, have total spending, which equals 40% of total national income. If they were spending that efficiently, we'd be slaves now. And in the second place, the waste is so obvious that it arouses a counter-movement on the population at large, 
People are disillusioned with government, and it increases the chance that they will recognize where this road is taking them and get off that train before it goes all the way.